This homely little thing is probably the least understood tool ever made by ShopSmith. And it's probably something you need. Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here once again is in the future home of my shop. And yeah, in a, in a video quite a while ago, we talked about using the drum sander on your drill press, or in my case, on my ShopSmith drill press. We talked about how there are drums in all different sizes and lengths, and these can go into your drill chuck. I mean, the ShopSmith two and a quarter inch drum fits right on the end of the, the quill without even needing to use any kind of an adapter. All right, so why are we talking about this again? Well, okay, great question. You asked very good questions, by the way. <laughs> well, one of the challenges when using an abrasive drum is you end up getting buildup of uh, a sawdust, potentially some glue, some resins, things like that on the drum. Now, this has been resolved in a couple ways, and we all know about using uh, a crepe rubber abrasive cleaning stick. But there's this whole other tool that people use occasionally for inside curves, and that is something called an oscillating spindle sander. And this uses a, a slightly taller drum in most cases. And instead of just spinning around, it's also stroking up and down. And that way, you're not just sanding in the exact same spot on your drum. Shopsmith saw that, saw the popularity of that was growing, and the engineers at Shopsmith came up with a neat accessory. So this is the oscillating spindle sander attachment. I have a very early one. In fact, if you look at the label on here, it's it's one of the pilot runs, which is why perhaps mine has something unique that yours does not. We'll check this out towards the end of the video. There might be something very special going on underneath this label. But anyway, the way this thing attaches is you attach a hub to the top of your, uh, your Mark V headstock. And this is the same hub that is on your... Golly, it's a number of tools, but for sure it's on the on the bandsaw. Um, so this is different than the, uh, how many splines? It's different than the four spline hub that you typically find there. It's just going to go up, couple onto the headstock, and clamp onto the way tubes here on back. Now here's where we really have to start paying attention. Um, we want to extend the quill about an inch and a half. We want to get ourselves down here inside the insert, and we're going to lock that quill extended. Now, it's important when we turn this on that we don't lock this quill in this position. We're going to have to unlock it. Um, and then up here, I want to make sure that this rotating shaft up here is aligned to 11 o'clock. If I was looking at it from the end, it'd be at 11 o'clock. And then down here, we're going to connect this little linkage right here onto that shaft. Okay, now this is going to be what's going to be moving the quill up and down. And depending upon where we position this in that slot, will determine how much of a stroke we're going to get from the sander. But we'll just slide that on and lock it in place. And that's just pinching. Okay, now let's loosen this up. Make sure that everything is free. And then here we go. And as you can see, it's coming a little bit too far out of the table. So that means I want to loosen this. So with that loose, we're just going to extend the quill a little bit further and lock it in place. There we go. Now, we're getting somewhere between a half inch and seven eighths of an inch of a stroke here. Uh, the further out on that arm we position that pulley, the shorter the stroke is. I know it's counterintuitive. Um, let me show you. I'll extend this all the way out to the end. And now you can see how little this arm is moving. And how short the stroke is. We'll bring that in a little bit. In fact, that's about at the extent of its travel. <laughs> Let's measure that.
Yeah, 20 millimeters to be exact. But let's see this in use. Now you see I'm getting quite a bit of dust build up here. What can we do about that? Well, I have a table insert that has a dust chute built into it. So all I need to do is to hook a vacuum or a dust collector up to it. Let's try that. So I wrote about something on the Shopsmith Tool Hunter blog years ago about something you might see underneath the cover of this oscillating sander. Let me first pull the cover off so you can see what's happening inside because that's actually kind of cool. All right, ready? Well, we'll see, what's, we'll see what happens there behind the cover, but check out what's behind this. Yeah. The engineers at Shopsmith took an existing product that they were selling, a large wheeled wet dry grinder, and uh, they saw some potential in that gearbox. And uh, I think it was Dave Flora actually who did this, and he created the sander. So watch what's happening under the hood. And for drum sanding sets like this, you simply remove the large drum and swap it out with your quill that you've installed a drive drum in. Because of that reach, I'm gonna drop my table down. I'm gonna support the carriage as I Release the carriage and let it slide down the way tubes just a bit. So what did I miss? There's bound to be something. There's always something. So be sure to leave your questions, comments, and cheap shots down below. We'll do a follow-up video in a couple days, and uh, we'll see how all that goes. In the meantime, make it a great day. We talked about how you can buy, oh, all sorts of diameters and sleeves, different grits, and how the Shopsmith, uh, uh, and how the Shopsmith drum sanding drum. Here's the thing. When you use a drum sander, one of the frustrations is the abrasive starts to get filled up with sawdust. Okay, we all know you use an abrasive cleaning stick or crepe shoulders 
or a crepe. We, yeah, we all know you use a, uh, a, a, a. So yeah, this is the oscillating spindle sandal. So this is the oscillating spindle. I'm gonna say it. Hey, it's got from mygrowthrings.com. Here, here once again is in the future home of my shop. What am I gonna say?